So, welcome to the FASM 2017 Distributions Dev Room. I am here with Anne Nicola and Samuel Verschild, uh, and they are going to talk to us today about Magia, successes and lessons learned after six years of forking, or six years after forking, excuse me. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, it will only no. go to the video. Okay, uh, so, so I have to speak, speak loud. You okay. have to speak loudly and, and speak to oh, okay. millions okay. watching from home. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm the girl, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm here for the quota. <laughs> and uh, so we are going to speak about Magia. Who knows about Magia here? Except the usual suspect. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, so we wanted to, uh, to propose a, a talk about what we have done in Magia and how it, it, it goes since uh, we started in uh, uh, six years ago, in fact. So uh, a brief presentation of Magia for those who, knows, who, who don't know about it. So uh, Magia is a fork from Mandriva in uh, 2010 uh, when things went bad in Mandriva and uh, we didn't want to lose 10 years of work on code. So uh, as salar most of the salaries were leaving the companies, we decided then to uh, just to save uh, the code and create this fork. It was decision in about well, five minutes and uh, well, we are a bit mad, but uh, after all, it was a good decision. Um, so what uh, we wanted to preserve is the free software basis and uh, the, uh, the way how it's easy to use for uh, both contributors and users because we, you will see that uh, it's a big goal for us to uh, make it easy for people to contribute to Magia. Also, we had a big challenge as the uh, distribution was based uh, on a company before and we have to switch to a community which is also a big thing to achieve, uh, both legal, financial, organization and so on. Uh, just to give you an idea about Magia community, uh, we have about 100 packages accounts. They are not all active a lot, but still they are working on Magia. <laughs> Um, we do have 3,000 Bugsy accounts, also it's not all active, but it shows quite an activity on, uh, on bug management. And we achieved more than 20,000 bugs just some days ago. Um, we achieved, yeah. Most are fixed. Yeah. Yes, most are fixed. Are they all fixed? <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, we do have uh, some mailing lists also, uh, for example, uh, one dedicated to development with 2,050 pe people registered, general discussions, and also quite active forums for rather for users. And uh, a lot of discussion there, and still some issues to make those people spoke to speak together, both on, on one side developer and on the other side users. Um, well, what we wanted to do was to uh, especially give back the control to the community because uh, uh, Mandriva was part of the distribution before and uh, we had to, uh, to make an all community project. Um, we had to uh, set up all the things to make it work. And uh, it took a long time at the beginning. It took about uh, nearly four months. Uh, four months, especially for the older infrastructure tools, uh, because we had uh, we had no uh, no specific idea how to handle it at the beginning. Um, so it it must be reliable, maintainable, scalable, and uh, so uh, people started to work on something we didn't have in Mandriva, like uh, config management tools, like puppets to administrate all the, in, uh, uh, the infrastructure, and uh, <coughs> also find the, the, the resources, like the servers, the money to, uh, to, to for the bandwidth, and, and so on. Um, so the first the first uh, version of the distribution was not uh, 
uh, a big, uh, a big, uh, a big one. It was just to start from Mandriva and then go to Magia. So the first big uh, work was to bootstrap the distribution. I don't know if you know about it. We have a blog, uh, a blog post about it. It's just to rebuild all the distribution from, from the very basis, so that we have all uh, from Magia, and we are sure that we have everything we need as packages and codes to rebuild the distribution. Um, and when we started, we didn't have any goal, just to save the code. That was the only goal we had. Uh, and finally, the goal just went after. So this is how we are organized. Uh, we wanted to something uh, clear and easy to understand for a newcomer. Uh, so this is the, the team we, uh, we communicate. So we have, in fact, two, uh, two big structures. You have the Magia Council and the board. The board is reserved for all the legal aspect, aspect for the Magia Association. It's based in France. And uh, uh, really, it, not, nearly nothing happened in the board because it's just to manage the, 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 this legal aspect. Everything happened in the Magia Community Council. This is uh, a place where all the teams in the distribution have some represent, representants, and we have uh, discussion between the teams, between packagers, documentation, communication, and, and so on. And uh, we try to, uh, to find solution there. We have regular meetings. Uh, during uh, release, we do have one meeting, one meeting per week on IRC, otherwise it's uh, every two or three weeks. Uh, for now, for six years, we had to, uh, to report some problems maybe one or twice to the board only. So, so this is working quite well for now. And all the teams then have specific goals. So as I said, packages, documentation, um, development, um, security, and so on, and they are all organized as they want. They are quite autonomous. Uh, we try not to be too heavy and uh, just ask them to report to the council so that we can have a global view of what is happening in the distribution. Um, and uh, so people, for now, as you will see, we try to lower the barrier to, to entry th those teams so that everybody can contribute in Magia. So, yeah, auto-congratulations auto slide. We are happy for now because uh, if you follow a bit Magia, we have now five releases out. Uh, so this is quite nice because fork is always uh, a big question. Is it going to work? Is it going to uh, in the time? And uh, well, we have five distribution out, the six in on the way. Uh, it's, it's taking time, but it's going. And uh, we do have now a real com community of users and contributors. That was the big fact. Are we going to keep our contributors? And it's, it's working at the moment. What we are proud of is we didn't have nasty issues on these five uh, releases. Means no big headline with hi, Magia broke uh, everything and, and so on. So upgrade is going smoothly and new versions are going smoothly also. Uh, and uh, well, the only thing which has changed at the beginning wanted to uh, communicate on planning, say the next version is planned for this date and, and things like that. And we are taking the I could say the Debian way of releasing, that's a big one. We release when it's ready because of the constraint of the community. Everybody is not available at the same time. We had to make some choice and decide to uh, just to lower the, the, the headlines. Headlines. Oh, your turn. Hi, so uh, she is uh, among us to, uh, the one who's coming from the company before and now uh, doing it all uh, on her free time. And I'm, I, I started like, uh, like many contributors as a user who started reporting bugs and 
and progressively uh, get into the, the distribution and, and uh, contributed. So I'll talk about uh, contribution. So some facts, uh, obvious facts. Uh, a healthy community project needs to renew its contributors' base or grow, even, if possible, grow it in order to do better things. Uh, so we need to attract potential contributors and, most of all, have them stay. So how it works in Magia, it's that our team are uh, welcoming. Uh, that's not just a word, it's the way it works, uh, maybe in some teams better than in other teams, but globally uh, there's a good relationship between people, be them old contributors or new contributors. And and we have a special uh, attention to newcomers because we know it's not easy to go somewhere you don't know the pe you don't know the people you don't know how to contribute. We tend to we try to make it easy. So uh, in Magia, it's not just for elite joining the teams. It's is for anyone with strong motivation and, of course, being able to work together with teams with other people. And we have a mentoring program to uh, help them start in good conditions uh, and uh, learn how we work together. Uh, the barrier uh, to contributing is usually higher in users' heads than it is in reality because there's a common belief that you need extraordinary skills to contribute to such a big project. And some users have a habit of thinking that they are outside and Th that maybe uh, some c re uh, remaining client mentality it's th that the providers, that's the users, the consumers. So we have to communicate and invite them. So I try to illustrate that with extraordinary uh, schematics. Uh, so on the left, uh, that's what's in many users' heads, not every one of them, of course. So. You have the contributors, and that's what they will call Magia, and you have the users, and that's not Magia. And uh, the contributors, they deliver the product, and users, they use it, and they ask when they have problems or need something. And there's a, dist a distance between them. And I think it's a big distance. Uh, what it's actually, it's that in, by definition, Magia is the community of all users, contributors, all together, because just using the product, just using Magia is already contributing. It's enlarging our user base, and it always brings some kind of benefits to the distribution in the end. Uh, maybe someone will see what you are using and get interested into it. Maybe you will be so um, angry at a given bug that you will take the steps to report the bug and so you are already contributing. And the steps to go to a next level of contribution, if you wish, are uh, quite uh, low quite uh, easy to, small, yes, small. So now uh, I could talk a lot about contribution, but I will uh, focus on a specific part of contribution uh, that, it's, that is important in any project, but in uh, community, community distribution, it's a real question. It's about leadership. So we have lots of different projects lots of different teams in the distribution, lots of, lots of people. We need some kind of coordination, so we need some kind of leadership, to sh some people to show the way and to act as catalysts to uh, provoke more, uh, more guided work. So we have elected team leaders. Uh, in some teams, it's not just one, it's several co-leaders who work together, and there are also deputies, and almost I, I looked at our current teams, and currently almost all of them just started as users uh, and went progressively uh, into teams and, and became uh, team leaders. And not every team leader dreamt of being a team leader. Uh, sometimes it, and maybe often, it's no one else wants to. Uh, have this burden on their shoulder and someone 
says, okay, I'll do it. Also, there's another form of leadership that is with less responsibilities, but with uh, great impact if, uh, if done. Uh, it's uh, helping other people to work together uh, towards uh, some goal. And I will take an example. Lots of text that if you don't understand, you can't understand me, uh, you have all of it, but I'll try to, to be clear. So we have this uh, an annoying release blocker bug. Uh, it's been there for months. In, it's in, it was in Magia 6. And the process was okay. It had been triaged correctly, assigned to the, the right person, a group of persons, but nothing happened. So uh, you are annoyed by the bug, and you decide that you will try to have it fixed. You don't know how, you don't know who will manage to fix it, but you try. And uh, first, uh, you say, uh, is there, is there is this bug? <laughs> is someone working on it? Or can someone work on it? You can't give orders. And it doesn't work at first. Uh, prob probably uh, everyone is too busy or thinks it's someone else's job. Someone else has the, be has the skills to do it. So you ask again, still no success. So finally, you try your, your relations and you, you ask to someone specifically. You know that might be the right person. And he says, okay, so that's help. But uh, in some situations, this stops here, actually, and the bug is fixed and uh, everybody is happy. But in this slide, since I wanted really a lot of text, I'm continuing. So several weeks or months again, uh, later, you notice that it's still not solved. So you decide to act again. That's, that's the act of leadership. The, you, deci that you decide to act. You're not a team leader. You're just someone who wants things to move forward. So you ask uh, about the status, but the first volunteer finally won't be able to make it in time, or maybe won't answer at all. So uh, you're back to square one. No one wants to take responsibility alone for this difficult task, so you try something else. You ask several uh, people who are annoyed by the bug also. Let's fix it together, and you form a commando, and we work off list with them exchange information about it, and you focus during a uh, small lap of time on this bucket. And finally, it works. Uh, someone gives uh, an element of debugging. Someone else knows something about how SystemD uh, works and uh, will tell you uh, uh, a possible thing to try. And one week later, it's fixed. So that's an example that shows that there's a formal contribution that is not easily described uh, in teams or in matter of teams of kind of contribution, but w is also really important to make uh, to uh, remove the, the blocking points uh, and it doesn't require extraordinary skills, just communication and commitment. You have to to want it to be fixed. Okay, yeah, that was the longest slide I know. <laughs> so. Uh, now we'll talk about our QA and security teams. So both used to be uh, inside the company before the fork. So we had uh, a concern because we didn't know if we would find volunteers. We could not just take the former contributors and transpose them into uh, the community because there were no former contributors. So we had to build something from scratch. It worked. The QA team uh, who test the updates candidates and also uh, the ISO, image, ISO images before they are released. Uh, we, well, we were lucky to find a great team leader who shaped the team uh, with great communication. And this team now uh, and for years has had weekly meetings on IRC, and it helps them feel like a crew that chat about every, anything. Uh, it's a real team. 
and uh, and also uh, that team leader had to stop recently. Uh, the team is strong enough to continue. Uh, they have an efficient mentoring program. It's the team where we send new contributors when they don't know uh, what to what to work on. We tell them try the QA team, and it can be a step towards packaging uh, or other contribution forms too. Okay, and they have their own tools, so that it's easier to contribute. So it's really effective now. And the security team, it's one person. So that's one extremely dedicated person who uh, watches and uh, creates bug reports for every security issue and tries to get other packages to work on it, but ends up doing most of the work uh, himself. Uh, surprisingly, uh, even this way, we are often as fast as other distros who have more resources and we have a high confidence in these uh, uh, updates thanks to the QA testing. So it worked so far, but it's not sustainable in the long term. But let's hope a new packager joins the security team. Five minutes for you. Four yeah. minutes for you. <laughs> okay, so what's now? Like, we are not going to switch to herd, but uh, we have uh, many uh, goals still to achieve. Um, and uh, I will talk about it uh, uh, um, on the tools side. Uh, it's not to, uh, to speak about tools because they are tools, but they can uh, help on achieving these goals. So uh, we try to, uh, to start very simple, very easy, and uh, give the tools to work to our contributors. But that was six years ago now. Well, long time. Uh, we do have now resources. This is re re reliable, sorry, even more than in Mount River, because when I was working in Mount River, we did have some more crashes like in, uh, than in, uh, in Magia. And uh, we do have also a small motivated team on the sysadmin tools. And uh, they, are, they are very uh, high level skills, so that's a good thing. But this is far from being perfect, why? Because we do have, we still have some oldish side in our infrastructure, especially, for example, we still have some SVN use. Uh, we have uh, packages in SVN and all the code is in Git. So we still have to migrate all the things to Git. This is a big goal to achieve. Also, uh, we, would, we do have to adapt the tool we have. Uh, the, more, the, the, the most user-friendly tool we have for now is GitWeb. Well, that's not, not too bad, but uh, we do have to think about adding new tools like, uh, you know, like GitLab, for example, to help people contributing. Um, also, we have a big bottleneck in CISAM, in CISAM admin tool team, sorry. Because for now, either you have all the rights on all the infrastructure or you have no rights. There is no uh, granular right. So it's hard to integrate the team because you need to trust them uh, a lot because you are just giving the root password, in fact. So that's a big, also, that, that's a big uh, uh, evolution to make. And also, we, we do have also um, uh, a point with the patches management tool. For, for now, if you want to contribute and just send a patch to start with, you have to use either the mailing list or uh, on IRC, uh, and the best is Paxia. But it must be lost because there is a, it's a hard thing in each time. So we do have also to find a way to, uh, to, uh, to help people to bring some patches as a first contribution. So what we have as a goal is uh, using uh, today tools, nowadays tools. And as I, I talk, we are thinking about uh, uh, introducing GitLab just to reinforce our workflow and help people uh, like with uh, review tools, for example, patch review tools inside, and uh, give some uh, more easier access to the code and uh, to the packages. This is uh, a big thing to do.
Also, we do have a lot of tools, upstream tools from Agia, like building the ISOs, all the DRAGLIX tools, and, and so on. And uh, we do need to give some visibility to this project. So GitLab will be a way to help us to uh, advertise and take some more contributor on it. And finally, yes, we have to also help people to uh, rethink the workflow. We use Git, but we use it as SVN. So no branches, so it's hard to <coughs> collaborate because everything basically is in master. So if you want to contribute, you have to, uh, you, you have to create branches which are not used for now. So it's very hard to, to manage. So at least, uh, well, if you, if you, if you want to, uh, to speak with us, uh, just we need some, uh, some feedback. We have some questions here which are still handling uh, we, are, uh, we have some questions about packagers organization. Maybe there are some distribution guys here in the room. Uh, how to get people interested in bug fixing, that's the big question. And how to get some contribution in non-technical areas, that is also uh, a big point for Magia. Thanks.